I fit the description quite a few times where I come from, but never before did I think I fit the description in Mexico! But today, we're in Oaxaca. And I gotta tell you, we are loving it. The people, the culture, the landscape, it's all on point. Yeah. And again, we are more than tolerated, we're celebrated. Oaxaca is just one of those places that really celebrates diversity. Whether you're a foreigner or not, so we've had no issues here whatsoever. But getting here really uncovered. Put the mask right off. Some discriminatory policies going on in this part of Mexico. For real. And the story goes something like this. All right, it all pretty much started in Cancun. Yeah, we were spending our last day there and we thought, hey, let's check out Isla Mujeres. Look, I was trying to have a leisurely day, had on some little tank top and some shorts. My wife was like, nah, bruh, uh, you need to put on something you gotta iron. I mean, because we were <laughs> filming that day too and I had recently purchased a dress and I thought this is the perfect day to wear it. So we were feeling good. Yeah, look good, feel good. We hit the docks to go out and that's when it all went down. Now, we made a little short video when everything happened for our Patreons. Cue up that video, babe. Right. Check it out. So, y'all saw the previous video, and if you didn't, check it out. If not, I'll tell you. We got stopped in Cancun on our way over to Isla Mujeres. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a ferry that you catch over there. We're standing in line, lots of people, and they singled us out to completely go through our things. What are you looking for? You know, the attitude of the police was just kind of friendly, kind of playful, and I didn't know why we were the only people we realized at the moment were being mm. stopped. So A, I don't fall for that okie doke. Police are always that friendly when they're trying to get you. Okay. A, B, they went through our stuff and asked some particular questions that let me know that they were looking for drugs. Uh, do we have a cigar? Cigar? No, no, para nada. Why would you ask if we got a cigar? Like, why would, that's the, that's the sell why. cigars is completely legal in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So she asked if we had a cigar, if we had scissors and some other stuff. So yeah. anyway, uh, they go through our stuff deeply. Rondell's doing the math. Cigars, scissors. Cigars equal somebody's rolling up a blunt. <laughs> so look, I don't know what old girl thought she was going to find, but she showed enough thought she had a collar. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised she didn't ask me if my dress had pockets, because they were looking through everything. Everything. Look, we, we went through a dog even before we got to her. We saw the dog. You know, I actually said hello to the dog, kicked it with the dog a little bit. Uh, but they still decided to go through our stuff. Now, at this point in time, we're not making a big deal out of it. Yeah. Even though you pulled the only black people who are in line, looking kind of official official, but you still want to go through our stuff. Right. We weren't the only foreigners in line but we were definitely the only ones that Look, fit the description. It was a whole bunch of hippie looking people out there also mm -hmm. uh, who fit the description of a weed head in my eyes. But you saw us and automatically thought, you gonna catch us up. Um, just a little advice to my people coming out there. If you were head for real, do your stuff back at the hotel or whatever. Don't be trying to creep your stuff over to the island because they got the dogs out, mm -hmm. uh, they are patrolling. And if you fit the description, they're probably gonna search you. Three, three, two, two. I ain't done yet, because yeah. if it was gonna search me, and if I was ahead, it would've been in my shoes anyway. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm just saying, and I don't need no scissors no more. Who use, who use scissors? Who even smoke blunts? Like, people still smoke blunts? Okay, months? baby. Is that like a thing? Okay, like, cut. The very next morning, we are on a flight going to Chiapas. Chiapas is a place we had never been before. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to check it out, explore it a little bit, but we are headed ultimately to Oaxaca. All right, my beautiful people, we're on leg three of our journey. Uh, we are going to take an overnight bus into Oaxaca. Courageous, right? Yeah, we're gonna do that thing and see what it, what it does. Um, but we have a long wait before uh, 10 o'clock tonight. We have about eight hours to wait. So uh, we're gonna hang out in the city, bum around, try to stay awake and uh, prepare. We have zero supplies because we wanted to go to an island yesterday instead of uh, go grocery shopping and take care of the evening. So we're gonna try to find us a grocery store, A. We're gonna find us, try to find us a place to chill. And we're gonna try to find us a movie theater uh, that's showing an English movie possibly. So that's how we're killing time up until 10. But well, we wanted to catch the overnight yeah. bus from Chiapas into Oaxaca. We didn't mind taking the bus at all. All throughout our travels in Latin America, Mexico hands nice. down has some of the best transportation Apart options. Apart from Brazil, everybody else Also, sucks. let's say also Brazil, because I wouldn't even know how to rank them. But true, true, traveling true. in Mexico is super convenient. The buses are great. So we were excited to take this overnight bus. 
We want to see the countryside, yada, 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 yada. Y'all, we kicked it in Chiapas. Uh, our bus didn't leave out till, I don't know, 9 or 10 o'clock yeah. that night. Mm -hmm. So we went to a couple of coffee houses, caught a movie, killed some zombies. Let's go. Uh, the time came for us to go get on this bus. But that in itself presented some problems that we weren't exactly expecting. So we boarded the bus around 10.30, 10.45. Uh, it was a crowded bus, it's late at night, we're tired as all get out mm -hmm. because we kicked it all day long. We did, and throughout our journey, our bus was stopped four different times. Now the first time my baby was asleep. Oh God, I mean, <laughs> I'm one of those people that knock out right away. Yeah man, so uh, we on there, they pull us over. Um, and I really didn't know what was going on. They, they pull us over, a guy gets on, he walks past me, then he comes right back to me, asks to see my passport, mm -hmm. show him my passport, wake my baby up, give him her stuff. Um, you know, no big deal. Because if you don't know, like, this is just part of the program in Mexico and everywhere, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna hit checkpoints, yeah. you show them your documentation, going about your business. It's the Yarbrough's advice to always carry your documents with you for just such occasions. Yeah, but just know that this practice is commonplace all throughout Mexico. Right. Felt a little weird, um, and it got weirder as we proceeded to ride. The next stop, same thing happened. Um, guy gets on the bus. This time, he doesn't even walk past us. He comes right up to us and asks us for our documents. Now, we are sitting in the third row from the back of the mm -hmm. bus. On a dark bus. On a dark bus, and it was an obvious beeline. Straight to, to us. Now, uh, this guy in particular, uh, the second one, he was just a straight a-hole, y'all. Just uh, went through each and every one of our entries and exits in Mexico, and we have a lot. Gets whatever jollies off he had to get off, gets off the bus, and we get stopped again. But I think at this point, we know the drill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as we got stopped, I'm pulling out my documents, pull out the camera, set it up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, I knew exactly what was happening. Again, now this time it was a military officer. Straight beeline to yeah. our seats only. Um, and at this point, I'm wondering like, what kind of conversation is the bus driver yeah. having with these people? Because these are military <laughs> stops and immigration what stops. At? What's up? Right, like he <laughs> flags over the bus, bus stops, bus driver gets off. He's like, you got any black people on the bus? Yeah, third row from the back, because that is how it seemed. April said this while we were on the bus, and I was like, girl, that's insane. That's not what's happening, yada, 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 yada. Look, the last time, uh, this gentleman who was just doing his job, but I gotta say, um, the military officer and the last police officer um, were strictly just doing their job. As soon as they saw we were from the States, they kind of gave us our passports, went on about our business. One mm -hmm. guy didn't even check the passport, he just saw that it was blue, but went on about his business. But still, he also made a beeline directly to us. Mm -hmm. um, I got off of that feeling a certain kind of way and I wanted to make sure that I talked to all of my subs and everybody out there to let them know it's some shit going on in Mexico you need to know about. We shared this with our patrons um, in like real time. Yeah. And one of our patrons sent an article about another foreigner who was here, uh, lighter, lighter complexion, mm -hmm. who was on the bus and noticed the exact same thing happened, where the officers were only interested in pulling the black people off of the bus getting them photographed and going through their belongings. Which is kind of crazy, which can be it's absolutely intimidating, right? Yeah. Um, but as we got along in Oaxaca, we had a, a little coffee shop conversation with some people, mm -hmm. and a guy told us he's a, like a 20 year resident, been living in Oaxaca for a long time, spent yeah. his whole reti retirement here. And he started laughing. He's like, oh yeah, that route, we all know that they will pull you over and go through your stuff if you are black. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, it's a Haitian issue. Hmm. <gasps> And that led us to the city of Tapachula. There's a humanitarian crisis unfolding in southern Mexico. For months, waves of migrants and asylum seekers, mainly from Haiti and Central America, have poured into the city of Tapachula. Tapachula is an infierno. Tapachula is a living hell. It is an illegal prison because nowhere in the law does it say that migrants can only be kept in one city. The streets have turned into concentration centers. Mexican immigration laws are being perverted and manipulated in order to appease the United States. The streets of Tapachula are packed with migrants. 
They're frustrated over Mexican government policy that prevents them from leaving the city. We just want to get out because we're not here to stay. We're just going through. We have no money, no food, nothing. We're in prison here without anything, and the government does not help. Now, Mexico is going through a migrant crisis right now, and a lot of people are coming over from Haiti and from Central America, but they're being held in the city of Tapachula. There seems to be a policy that is holding all the immigrants in the south, in the south, literally, they're not letting them go mm -hmm. north, so they're policing the borders to Chiapas like it ain't nobody's business searching for anybody of darker complexion, anybody that looks black who's trying to escape the plantation. So it makes sense why there would be so many checkpoints and why there would be a beeline straight to us <laughs> on our route through Chiapas to Oaxaca. We literally fit the description. Um, for better or for worse, these are the facts. Now it's a whole separate ordeal, me standing uh, in solidarity with my Haitian bros. Free the people in this city. This city is acting like a holding cell. They are keeping people captive, telling them they need to have some type of paperwork to pass through unless they landed mm -hmm. there or whatever. It's just some BS that the United States is kind of forcing Mexico to do to keep the immigration at the border down, migration to the border down. So keep in mind, we have been in Mexico for about a month and been pulled over five different times and had our stuff gone through, um, all because we're traveling while black in Mexico. So am I saying that there's a problem? Heavens to Betsy, yes, there's a problem here. Um, and if anybody who doesn't think that there's a problem here, you need to get your head examined. Now, maybe you are going through things up north or maybe you haven't experienced it yourself, but I'm telling you, us and our personal experience, Having, having I had our stuff gone through, somebody looking for weed, I don't know what that's all about, even though somebody did try to sell me herb on the island, mm -hmm. it wasn't a black person, it was a Mexican, um, having our, get, getting pulled over multiple times and having the uh, officials come run, run up to us on the bus and harass us each and every single time, that's a problem. Bad things can happen to anybody who fits the description in Mexico. So for any of our black travelers, our brothers and sisters that are traveling through the South of Mexico, you're going through Chiapas, you're going through Oaxaca, and you're taking the bus, beware, beware that this might happen. Have your stuff in order and be ready. You're probably gonna be searched and have your documents gone through.